Nestled in a quiet street of Bondy, a suburb of Paris, a synagogue under high security. Armand Azoulay, its president, greets us as morning prayers begin. It's Sunday. Only about 15 worshippers are attending. But even on Saturdays, for Sabbath, usually the busiest day, barely 40 people turn up. A few years ago, it would have been over 100. Amar works hard to revive the once flourishing community life. This place of worship is also at the heart of the social life of the town's Jewish families. We've invested a lot in the synagogue, we've refreshed it, we've started many activities that have encouraged people to come back. It was also necessary to reassure the community faced with a rise in anti-Semitic attacks. Reinforced doors, reinforced windows, reinforced walls, cameras. Why? Because there's aggression. There are opponents of Judaism. We won't mention them, but there are opponents. What do they want? They want to scare us, to terrorize us, so we're afraid and run away. Is that what they want? What we hope is to continue. What we hope is to be able to live in France. The synagogue is brand new. We didn't do that to leave. We did that to stay. In the past 15 years, the number of Jewish families in Bondi has fallen from nearly 500 to less than 200. The reasons for leaving are many, but the latest is fear. We come in the morning, we never know what will be in the news. What's more, they've brought into France this issue of the Palestinians. That's not right. We live in France, we don't live in Israel for now. I have to disguise myself to go to the synagogue because I can't come with my kippah on my head. So I have to put on a cap. Because there are some places here where people are really hostile to the Jewish community. Hostility that Armand's son Nathaniel, along with his older brother, painfully experienced last year. The young man says what saved him was the sport he's been doing with his father since childhood, Krav Contact. Armand is a teacher of the martial art, which is practiced by the Israeli army. As they were driving home, wearing kippahs, Netanyahu and his brother were brutally assaulted by a motorist. Shouting anti-Semitic insults, the man forced them out of their car and attacked them with a saw. Netanyahu saved his brother from having his throat slit, ending up with a dislocated shoulder and severe cuts to his hand. If I didn't know how to defend myself and I didn't know how to disarm him, I wouldn't have been able to help my brother. This sport saved me from dying with my brother. A sport that the 18-year-old now teaches to his younger brother. Since the attack, Nathaniel avoids wearing his kippah outside neighbourhoods where he feels safe as he does here in the 19th arrondissement of Paris. Many Jewish families from the Parisian suburbs have resettled here. Arma Azoulay has a travel agency there. His son sometimes lends a helping hand. The family is slowly recovering from the traumatic experience. With what happened, frankly, at first we thought about leaving the country. We wanted to leave. My father said, no, we stay here. We can't let this experience bring us down. My father left Morocco after a pogrom in which 47 Jews were massacred, just after Israel's independence. My wife is from Russia and her father was in the Gulag, and we wonder if we can ever settle down anywhere. I took a gamble saying, I think we can stay. If we want to make sure that Jews can stay in France, our authorities must understand that something has to be done now, without delay. Anti-Semitic acts often raise among French Jews the prospect of what's known as Aliyah, or departure to Israel. But they've mostly caused an internal displacement. Natalie, not her real name, left the suburb where she lived with her husband and three children. The family had been renting the house for almost 10 years. Here it is. I'm coming back almost a year later. That's where we got burgled when we were sleeping. They stole everything. They broke my son's motorbike, stole the elder one's motorbike. 
And not even a month later, in the parking lot, which is right there, not even 10 metres from our front door. One morning, I found my car all scratched. They engraved the word Jew on the driver's side, across the whole door. But it wasn't just scratches on the paintwork. Shortly after Natalie drove off, she realised two of her tyres had been slashed. The police advised us firmly, you have to go, you have to flee, you have to flee. That's it, we had to flee from anti-Semitism in 2017. The family stayed with Natalie's parents for several months until they found a new home. An apartment in a block in a neighbouring suburb. Step by step, we try to live normally again. We get things back together again, day by day. Natalie is still recovering from the shock she suffered. Here, she feels safer. Nothing would make her want to leave France, she says, though she does have her doubts. Of course we're Jewish, but above all, we're French. At the beginning when I was asked, do you want us to help you do Aliyah, go to Israel? I said, no way. It would mean not only did we have to flee from our home, but now we would leave everything, give everything up. I've worked in the same place for 20 years. My husband, my children, their sport, they've just started working. We don't have a language. We don't have a job there. We can't just go like that. Then you see, the more time passes and the more incidents we hear of in the media, I say to myself... Maybe, in fact, they're right. I think one day or another, we'll end up leaving. 